Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's talk hook up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano rods and reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two. Let's Talk Hook Up right here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here along with Corey Sandin. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up here right next to San Diego Landings. We're actually pretty busy. A lot of boats out today. There's some activity. Uh, yeah, for sure. We have the team from CCA California here. Wayne, Chris, and Tony are here. What a great show. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the, the texts, the calls, fantastic. Thank you all out there for your time and efforts and putting that in. And so many questions and and. Uh, a lot things to ask. Too. A lot, and yeah. and they're sending their text in via the app, Pete. That's one way to do right. it. Or give us a call two and three. There is one open line as we speak. Okay, two and three. Four three two ten ninety. Yep. And at the end of the show, we're giving away a full day trip on the San Diego. And yeah. Chris just up the ante. Okay. We're, what are we going to give away, Chris? We're going to give away two tickets to the upcoming Apps and Taps Festival here in San Diego for oh, our cool. San Diego chapter. Yep. Yeah. And That's when it. is that? That is May eighteenth at Marina Village. And it's honoring Captain Frank Lopresti. I'll Correct. be there, and a lot of the San Diego captains will be there uh, talking in uh, support of Captain Frank, and so deserving. Maybe doing a little bit of roasting too i think uh, i think yeah. there's going to be some serious roasting going on at in that fact thing. we just ordered the uh that that throne chair that he sits in yeah. as we roast yeah okay all right <laughs> i like it perfect yeah. no it's it's going to be a one not to miss especially if you're uh, a frank lopresti fan uh, and also a cca fan and support this the uh, the region so and so it's a good time yeah and Corey, i believe correct me if i'm wrong but you win most of the raffle prizes too yeah. well i i i went i went to the apps and taps that was at the Portuguese Hall, yep. and it, my wife and I, we did. We won a few <laughs> Look things. Look at that. You in the Rollo <laughs> drawing. Man, but, uh, you know what it comes down to? All you have to do is donate yeah. uh, funds and you or get enter. raffle tickets. You yeah. can't win unless you enter, right? That's yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. The beauty about it is every single dollar fundraised here in San Diego and now any of our chapters stays in California for these efforts. So and, that's cool. And I can tell you, because I had never been, I was embarrassed, and I said it on air, and I'm saying it now, I was embarrassed. I had never been. We had the greatest time ever. And so, I, and I think I heard that it's not at the Portuguese Hall this year. It's at, yep. it's at Marina Village. Which is next to C4 Sport Fishing. Yep. Right. Yep. And there's so Great much venue. Yeah. Yeah. Right awesome on the water. Yes. Yes. Tons of parking. Yeah. Tons, tons, tons of parking. Yeah. Free parking. Free parking is not yeah. an issue. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. It's always a good time. It's yeah. always a good time. Yeah. And that, uh, that, so, Apps and Taps, uh, May 18th. Yep. It's, uh, what time is it? Uh, I believe it starts at 5 o'clock. Five o'clock, okay. and it's uh, basically it's food and beer and wine and uh, refreshments. A membership to CCA. Uh, membership yep. to CCA. Live music. Uh, live music. Yeah. A- and uh, how much is it to get into? Uh, I believe it's seventy five dollars for single tickets and a thousand dollars for a table of ten. Okay, so very good. Yep, and with and, that thousand dollars, it's a VIP table, so you get some goodies too along and, with that. And is nice. it is it the same setup where all the beer vendors are there? All the breweries are there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We hey, got more. Yeah. We got it's super fun. Listen, I'm not a big drinker, but <laughs> I could not stop from going sampling. Sampling? Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Like, well, hello. Well, about, there's also the apps portion of that too. So yeah. there's always good food. Oh I yeah, Jeff from Sushi. Yeah, I was going to say. Is yeah. Jeff going to yeah. be there? Last year yeah. he had a fresh bluefin from the pen. Same deal. That was just insane. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I hung a lot with Jeff there, uh, sampling the bluefin for sure. And then oh, there was yeah. and nothing and left in the end. Just, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, of course Dan, the pizza gonna say, man, is going to be there making his uh, gourmet pizzas. Yep. Captain yeah. Dan's uh, Pizzeria, coined by Kerry Sherwood, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he will be there, and uh, all kinds of good stuff. And, and, it's it's all, and Don from Woodland Hills, they're going to make their uh, fantastic desserts. I specifically am. Looking forward to those cupcakes. Yeah. Oh my really? gosh. Yes. Yeah. No, and that's all included right in seventy five dollars. Correct. Yeah. And it's CCM membership. Yep. Correct. Right. Yep. So that means if you if you go to the apps and taps, mm-hmm. uh, you you join or re rejoin, uh, you add an extra year to your membership, then you can get into the star tournament for forty bucks. I was going to say, yeah. The beauty about CCA is no matter whether you renewed at the shows or any other different event, um, you never lose out on a membership. It always adds an, an, an additional year to your existing membership. 
membership. So you're not losing out on any time or anything. Or better yet, the B- the BD About Life membership, you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah, there it is. So uh, Apps and Taps, May 18th at the Marina Village, right next to C4 Sport Fishing in Mission Bay. Yep. Um, uh, honoring Frank Lopresti and yep. ro- roasting Frank oh, Lopresti. Oh, that be super yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, uh, how do we get tickets? So you can buy uh, tickets or tables at ccacalifornia.org. If you click the events button, Apps and Taps will be right up there along with all of our different events and charters. And um, we have a golf tournament in Orange County again coming up in October. And, you know, there's so many different uh, uh, events for nine different chapters. So, you know, plenty of stuff to participate in. I can speak for the Apps and Taps. There's a huge amount of the industry that comes. And if you come as a participant, you'll get to see and meet and talk with all the industry. Speaking of roasting Captain Frank Lopresi, we're going to start a catch report here. And I guess we got a special guest there. Uh, It's sponsored by uh, the best quality and the lowest prices, Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Pull up to the expanded Summit Gasoline and get the low, low gas and diesel prices for your car, truck, and boat. And it can accommodate 24 cars and trucks fueling at the same time, 12 diesel pumps, the free ice for Let's Talk Hookup Lessons including if you buy 35 gallon fill up a minimum fill up you get a hundred pounds of free ice they always give free ice to let's talk hook up listeners uh, again uh, uh, the guys over at summit are super supportive uh, uh, two thousand dollars one of, of summit gasoline one uh, by the chef of the red rooster there uh, from the rollo deal uh, mike and uh, and they've got a new car wash that's going to be coming in they got a whole bunch of new stuff They're always doing improvements there summit gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. We're going to start the catcher board today from the Royal Polaris, Captain Roy Rose. What's up, Roy? Hey, good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> now, we're, uh, we've are we still got a couple days left, but we've had a, a very nice trip here. I remember last time I told you they were hitting in the afternoon, and uh, they pretty much bit every afternoon up until uh, yesterday. But anyway, we got a nice trip aboard. We got we had very good wahoo fishing yesterday. We had uh, we had fifty of those, and then we had in the gray. We had a handful of tuna. We had a two o two, and a couple other hundred pounders. And then we also had Big D, long time well, crew member on here, but he came out fishing this trip. He's retired now, but he got a three fifty eight on a PL sixty eight. Wow! Oh, man. man, at night. Yeah, yeah, about five, about four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. And this, wow. this, this, it go, big D. I saw the picture of him, and I love. What's the story? Somebody must have bought a a case of champagne because you're showering all the big fish guys with with champagne on there, right? Oh yeah, they're. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a picture of what it says. I can't put it on the air, but yeah, there's somebody had some champagne bottles made. <laughs> Just had some labels put on some cheap fruit or whatever it is. They're spraying it down with, but. Yeah, everybody that catches a 200-pounder, thank God they brought a bunch because we got 14 over two on here, and one of them, which is over three a lot. We got one guy in there, Kevin Shannon. He got a 258. Next day, he got a 256. And then uh, the other morning, he got that 202. Wow. So he's had a heck of a trip. I would Uh, say. How many days fishing do you have, Roy? Uh, We still have uh, a day and a half left. And, and, and then are, we you, come in. are you still anchored up on the bank and not, didn't have to move? Yeah, no, we're still here messing around. Yesterday the, there was no wind, so we really couldn't get the kite out. So we pretty much started Wahoo. Seemed like a bunch of new foot, a bunch of new fish moved in. That uh, was the wrong day for them to move in because there was no wind and no current. So we had to troll, and they were available. So we so we got some. <laughs> How cool. Oh, darn. Flat, calm water out in the middle of the uh, Pacific. That sounds like fun to me. Wahoo fishing. Captain Roy Rose, so uh, you come back. When do you uh, actually land back in San Diego so we can see that big fish from Big D? We get back the uh, 19th of April. 19th. We get back. All right. And then you start your maintenance period, and then back to fishing. Uh, in uh, That'll put you into June, right? Yep. Yeah. Back into June, see if we can... Help locate these bluefin that have gone MIA here the last couple of weeks. Hopefully, they show back up. I'll bet they will. Yeah. Well, hey, Roy, great to hear from you. We sure appreciate that report. What a fantastic trip. And uh, and and uh, and you and Jonathan are just doing a f- superb job on the Royal Polaris, and we appreciate you keeping us updated. 
All right, buddy. You guys have fun. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks, Roy. I appreciate that. I'm sure Roy will be at the apps and taps, right? Oh, roasting he's got, for Frank? He's, he's got on. a little bit of roasting going on. Has yeah, he has to be there. He's, he's, got, he, be he's there. got no excuse. A boat's going to be in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly right. Yeah, well, let's continue our catch report from the one and only Mark. Mark on the Bolsa Chicken and Editor. Good, Good morning, morning, Mark. Mark. Good uh, morning, Pete, Corey, Wayne, Chris, Tony. Great show this morning. And I hate following those long range reports with all that fantastic <laughs> <Yeah>. fishing. <laughs> that was, I've never fished with that Roy Rose, but man, that guy sure is a crack up to listen to him talk. <laughs> it's such a great report. But, but, um, Anyway, it sure was nice to feel that warm sun for a couple of days at the start of the week, Ooh, man. I yeah. almost forgot what that was like. It's uh, been a harsh spring for sure, but uh, no such luck this weekend. Now another general storm coming, breezy, rainy, chilly, but whatever. It's uh, springtime, and even though conditions are tough now, they'll be getting better. And we've seen a little bit of good fishing. So locally, those bass are still biting up off past. Uh, Palace Birdies there, that water up there got really cold. Conditions got pretty difficult, not so much up there for the bass or the halibut. But uh, from Huntington Beach south, that water, it's cool still, but it's been stable. And both calico bass and sand bass are biting pretty darn good on the structure spots. Just uh, plastic and a strip of squid is working, and, you know, guys are testing a few on sardines also. And some really nice grade there, so. They're waking up, and uh, as a little sidebar, you know, one of our most popular local spots is Iser's Reef that Russ Iser got built many years ago, and it's a beautiful piece of structure now. It's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of fish. But just yesterday, one of my customers was showing me a picture of an 8- to 10-pound spotted cabria that they caught out there on Iser. Just a beautiful, honest-to-God spotted cabria, and they let him go, which that's good, good news. So he's still swimming around out there. And here's another little Iser story. Pay attention, guys. There's a lot of sculpin that live on that spot as well as many others around here. you got to hold those sculpins securely. I always throw a good lip latch on them. And uh, one of my customers who was not paying attention and got spined hard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a good situation. His hands swole up instantly, a lot of pain. And, man, you got to pay attention to those uh, dorsal spines on the sculpins. Over at the islands, uh, with Rockfish now open, we got a little bit more coverage. Uh, not much of consequence from uh, Nick or SBI, but, you know, plenty of CODs, obviously, but no exotics. And then uh, a little bit of signal from Komeni. Good cod fishing, for sure, down there in the east end area. But a little bit of Bonita and some uh, school-sized yellows were caught on the front there. And then, of course, the wind blew again, so haven't had anybody back there. But, again, soon coming. And then uh, Catalina. It's trying to wake up over there. I mean, the cod fishing and the other bottom grabbers, they've been biting pretty good, but uh, not too much on the exotics yet. Still some decent halibut fishing, up shallow, very shallow, and uh, very little sea bass, though. Just one here, one there. Just not what it normally we'd expect to see. And interestingly enough, when you guys were talking about cycles earlier, you know, that checks with something I've been studying for years. I haven't mentioned much this year, Corey. The uh, flowers on the dogwood trees. Oh, so, yeah! I didn't hear much about it because I couldn't quite figure out what the hell was going on. You know, usually they're all flowering up heavy by the first part of February. Those flowers come down in a big flood. There's like the wind blows all the white flowers in the front of our store, and it's just you know they're everywhere. And that's usually just about the time the sea bass start biting. Well, this year it didn't work like that at all. Flowers showed up very late. They dropped very slowly all the way into the first part of March. They were still dropping. And uh, coincidentally, our sea bass are acting much the same. Very, very strange start to the sea bass season at Catalina this year. So I don't know what the hell it all means in the big picture other than it's springtime and it's time to go fishing, guys. Yeah, and pay attention to fishdope.com. Uh, Danny and the boys know where the fish. It's just that time of the year where you really got to pay close attention to it. And fishdope.com is your source. 30 bucks off a new membership to fishdope.com using the code HOOKUPNOW. Lowercase, no space, HOOKUPNOW, your $30 code. And, Mark, how do we find you? Well, P, we're in Huntington Beach. We're in the corner of Bolsa Chica in Edinger by the big Chevron station there. And the phone number at the store is area code 
840-4262, the website specificedgetackle.com. I made it all the way through the report without coughing. I'm still shaking off this bug here. Oh, you sound great. You sound great. So happy you're on the uh, path of recovery there, Mark. Yeah, we're getting there. And, hey, just a little quick sidebar here also. You know, last couple of years my friend Mike has had the boat down in uh, Mission Bay, which has been challenging because of the travel, you know, back and forth. But just yesterday got moved up to Dana Point, got a slip. He's been waiting for a slip for six years. And uh, got the slip, and the boat's up here, and we got a whole new chapter, a whole bunch of new ground to explore. We'll find those sea bass that have been missing. Last time I fished down there quite a bit, we were fishing out big coastal sea bass, just walloping them. Yeah. Well, so we'll find them this year, okay? Plus more. Go get them, Mark. I appreciate, appreciate that. I said, go get them. Find them for us. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, you guys. We'll see you. All right. Thanks. All right. We're going to follow up the uh, fish report with Marcos. Marcos from C4 Sport Fishing. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, guys. How's everyone doing this weekend? Do- doing great. Not- decent weather and-, and better than what it's been. Yeah. Had some absolutely beautiful weather this weekend. You know, it's, it's actually a little surprised. I think it hit the 80s a few times. Definitely cooled off a little bit, kind of back to that pre-May gray we're seeing. A little bit of wind today, but that looks like it'll only be like a day and then back to it. Very good half-day fishing all week there. New Seaforth, uh, mostly fishing a little deeper in the morning, fishing up to 600 feet. Lots of rockfish and reds. I mean, yesterday, 27 reds, 120 rockfish, 41 whitefish, sheephead for 30 guys. Afternoon fishing a bit shallower, nice mix of calico bass, rockfish, reds, whitefish, sheephead, sculpin there. It's all around great fishing on those half days and kind of, you know, what you expect when that rock fishing opens back up. So definitely check the website there for those trips. We're running those. Again, just a reminder, we're back to two trips a day there. So had a few people show up for the 8.30 trip that we don't have anymore and don't want you guys to do that miss both trips there. So check the website. We have a couple half-day boats out right now, or excuse me, day-and-a-half boats out right now. The Tribune and the Highliner out there looking around, and honestly, I'm surprised Mike hasn't called in and gave you a report and stole my thunder. You know, that's usually what he likes to do, but he hasn't done that yet, so we're waiting to hear from them. So check the website, seaforthlanding.com, for those half-day trips, morning and afternoon. We're going to have a uh, twilight trip starting pretty quick here. We've got within the next month or so. I believe the first one is May 10th. We're going to be running those twilight trips, so another little option for you, and we always talk about how fun those twilight trips are. San Diego starting to run May 1st, and definitely make those reservations sooner and later. We know how quickly those fill up. So seaforthlanding.com, give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. We're happy to help you guys out, get you on whatever trip you're looking to go on, from half day to multi-day, or come down and visit us in person. Stop in a tackle shop, pick up your MC swim baits, get on a boat, and go out there and catch some fish. I like your I like your approach. Yeah, and we're giving away a trip uh, to go fishing with Captain Mariah and Captain Matt on the San Diego today. So uh, perfect timing, May 1st, huh? Uh, May 1st is the first trip there. It's a Wednesday. Those weekends, especially the Saturdays, are filling up quick. So definitely, like I say, don't wait till the fishing's good because by then everybody's going to be making reservations, and we know how quickly those San Diego trips fill up. Yeah, it's good stuff, Marcos, and look forward to next week and hopefully some yellowtail and some bluefin tuna in the counts, yeah? Absolutely. I, I'm guessing we're going to see at least a few of both of those. And limits of reds and rockfish in the meantime. We'll go for that for sure. Thank you very much. And Catch Report is sponsored by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego, where you get a premier processing experience. Check out the new and easier online system to book your processing for your long-range trips, for your local and long-range. And now with the additions of the new team members, Fisherman's Processing stays far ahead of the rest. More same-day uh, capacity and the finest customer customer service stop by their location in old town on taylor street or you can check them out at fishmansprocessing.com and make your reservations today and Marilee from who runs fishermen's processing yeah. Marilee ekstrom i might add tim's wife yes. runs fishermen's processing right now and she told me that uh their online system's working great it's always better to book your processing order but now that they have that so streamlined and so much more same day capacity uh they're going to be taking walk-ups too so it's always better to to book your uh, book your processing uh, because you get first in line and but they're going to have a lot of 
same day capacity and 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 more just for walk ups if you just need a good the best processor around just you come back you forgot to make a reservation go up see if they have availability for you oh cool yeah so that's that's a good thing for sure and uh it looks like scott sherman's on the line good morning scott hey, scott hey good morning guys another good show good to hear wayne on the on the radio i don't get to hear him on my boat Nearly enough with uh, all the work he's doing for CPA. <laughs> okay. Man, I, I found a new. Co- speaking of your boat, uh, your compadre Scott sent in some pictures this week, and it's our feature. Check it out on our website, Let's Talk Hookup dot com. Uh, the feature photo of the week is on Scott's boats, and his buddy Scott uh, got these giant reds. Man, I need that spot. No, no, I'm not, I just found it. I'm not giving it up just yet. <laughs> not until after the tournament. Yeah, wow. Man. Yeah, probably right. At, probably right after the tournament, we'll talk. Okay. All right, sounds good. It'll go, but the, yeah, check that that pic photo out because it'll blow your mind how big those reds are that you got for sure. Uh, let's talk hookup dot com on the front page there and the uh, photo of the week. You'll see it. But uh, speaking of tournaments coming up pretty soon, right? The Southwestern Yacht Club tournament. Yeah, that's why I wanted to to call in. Uh, you've got two days left to get in on the early bird special where it's a $75 registration fee and it saves you a, a few dollars. So make sure you try and get in uh, before Monday or, or it's full it's full straight. Um, the tournament is going to come up here. It's our 54th annual bottom fishing tournament coming up on uh, May 13th. And the proceeds this year are going to help uh, Captain Rollo's kids at sea, friends of Rollo. Uh, and that's what we're doing. Is we, we do this tournament every year to raise money for charity. And this year it's going towards helping out Captain Rollo. So we'd like to see as many people come in and, and participate as, as possible since it's our only really open tournament where it's open to everybody of the year. That's so we can raise more money for Captain Rollo. That's cool. Yeah, um, the proceeds go to uh, taking kids fishing, which is really cool. So, how do we get in? And it's the fun of that tournament too, and then the barbecue and the whole deal and the wonderful facility oh, yeah. at uh, Southwestern Yacht Club. How do we get in the tournament? And it's not just for Southwestern Yacht Club people. It's open to everybody, right? Right, right. And uh, there's a couple. Of, there's a few easy ways to do it. You can go to the website, the uh, SWYC Anglers. Dot org. You can register right there. Uh, or if you're down at one of your local tackle shops here, you know, with uh, Dana or Fisherman's or Angler's Ed or Squid Co., uh, they have flyers down there, and there's an actual QR code that you can just scan it. It takes you right to the registration page, and everything is taken care of right there on your phone in, in, in a pretty quick order. So it's a super easy to get to. It's a super fun tournament. I mean, we start with a, a breakfast in the morning, then a shotgun start. Got to be back to the weigh-in by 3.30. Then we all proceed inside to the facilities and enjoy a couple of adult beverages and have the day's catch actually filleted up right there on the spot. And we make fish tacos out of some of the freshest fish tacos you can get. It's a, it's a really, really good night. And last year we raised about 25000 total, so I'm hoping to do more than that this year for, for a very worthy charity, which is Captain Rollins. Yeah, and a great raffle uh, to help the, that that cause and such like that too. A lot of great prizes being given away. And Sherm, you and oh, your yeah. guys do such a great job there. So once again, the date of the tournament and how do we get in? Uh, May eleventh. Uh, I'm sorry, May thirteenth. And go to swycanglers dot org or go to one of your local tackle shops and just scan the QR code, and you get right into it. And it's a it's a really really fun tournament. A lot of great route. Ra- I mean, I have one room in my house that's filling up with rods and reels and swag and that kind of stuff for the for the raffles we've got auction items you name it it's going to be there and it's just probably one of the funnest tournaments i mean i look forward to this tournament and the yellowtail shoot up those are my two favorite tournaments of the year there you go hey scott sherman uh appreciate your all your support and all you're doing and uh we'll talk to you real soon for sure hey Hey, one last Phones are packed. Corey, let's jump into it. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Alex, Alex in San Carlos, been very patient. Good morning, Alex. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Great. Doing good. Good, good. Hey, uh, I just have a question. So I know that a lot of, uh, like, certain species, like, they'll, they'll uh, you won't be able to fish them on certain times of the year and stuff like that, or, like, they might close down, like, another fishery. How do they determine that? How do they actually measure the uh, population of fish. The measuring of population of fish are done between the state and the federal agencies, Natural Means Fisheries Service, and they do uh, studies. 
um, and they are scheduled. So like right now, they're getting ready for a 2025 study of uh, hake, which is whiting, sardine, and anchovy is a good example. And then there are schedules for all of the different complexes of groundfish. There are schedules for um, other species. And it's very complex, and it's, it's a long-term effort, right? So we're looking three to five years out on, on that planning and making sure that we're ready to do it. And then on the state side, it's, it's a different ballgame. It's the Department of Fish and Wildlife having to do studies and do the same thing, put schedules together and get the team together on how they're going to do it. Wayne, it's a big ocean. It's <laughs> how, how accurate are these studies? Depending on the study. And what happens is when they don't do a full stock assessment, um, then they have to mathematically or statistically model the, the stock out there. So that's where, and then if they're not doing biological sampling of uh, age class and reproduction and uh, length based studies, then they have to model that, that information in too. So it's modeling on top of modeling in some cases. And when they just don't have enough staff time, resources to do all the studies that we need, then it's all statistical based. I don't think Wayne can talk about it the way we want to talk no. about it. It sounds very <laughs> that was inaccurate. A politically correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. it's an inaccurate science, as many things are. Yeah, it's a big ocean, and you can't can't count every fish. No, I mean a classic example of that would be Picacho. When they were so, oh, Picacho are so endangered. Endangered, and, and, yeah. and like every hook that you drop down to the bottom had a Picacho on it, right? Yeah. So then they figured out, yeah, I guess that's not really. Another example would be um, yellow eye rockfish in Alaska. I mean, oh my God, yellow eye rockfish is so endangered. Yeah. It's like every hook has a, like 10 yellow eye on it. Right? You don't want to get me going. Pete. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, sci it's an inaccurate science, but I guess you have to have some of it, right? We have to do the best we can, which is why we are so involved. Us and our coalition partners are so involved right now in trying to get the studies that are necessary that are going to help our management cycle coming forward because we recognize the issues. Do they ever consider talking to anglers? They do, but yeah. you can't use what you say in a in a model. Uh huh. That doesn't you can't. It's not scientific. It. But we're the ones, a voice of reason and reality, and yeah. that's so we're the ones that have to use that part of us to help the scientists to do better in their studies or more accuracy in their studies. That's where we're going to affect it, and yeah. we're the constituents. At the end of the day. Their employees doing a job, right? And their bosses and their management is what funds it and sets their priorities. But we're the constituents, right? We're the ones with the lobbying efforts to go to the Fed or the state government to do better, get them more money, more staff, set right. priorities. That's what we do. It's scary for me to think like a future without Wayne and the crew and CCA being there to counter their. I don't want to say stupidity because uh, I mean there's there's logic and you know logic things behind their thought process, but without Wayne there to steer them another direction, yeah. maybe the same direction but with a different thought process. How about that? Is that yeah? And and so I I come from a different industry. I didn't grow up in the fishing industry, even though I've been a fisherman my whole life. But this industry really needs to evolve, and what we're finding is that they just need help. They, they're stuck, we're stuck in a process uh, of management. And if we don't change it, we're just going to keep kicking this can down the road. It's going to change. Well, it's, it's whack-a-mole right now. Yeah. Look what's going on if, with the copper, the quill back, this, the that, now vermilion. It's whack-a-mole because what happens is as we do management and take a bag down on one species, it's going, the effort's going to shift somewhere else. Right. All you're doing is forcing the fishermen to go someplace else right. to do something, right? I'm just happy, Wayne, that you're there to represent us. So I that mean, we can fish. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, that's the bottom line. Hey, uh, Steve Pennard's on the line from Dane Landing. Good morning, Steve. Steve? Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So, anyways, Pete, I was calling in. Um, it sounds like a lot of stuff's going on in the next few weeks, but on uh, we are, are approaching our summer kickoff. Our uh, our event we have every year. This is probably eighth or ninth year um, on Saturday, May fourth, over at Dana Landing. Um, you know, obviously it kicks off with you guys doing a live broadcast, and it's uh, it's kind of like a little uh, mini day at the docks. You know, all the manufacturers will be there. Um, we have seminar. We have a like a, a panel seminar of. Corey Sandin and oh, Afrin Butin from Warbaits, mm -hmm. and Benny Florentino is going to come down with his boat. So, 
Yeah, with this uh, Camus you know. boat from West Coast Marine. You got that, it? That, have you been aboard it yet? I've seen it. You've seen I it. haven't been able to write you it yet. You haven't fishing yet? Yeah. No. Can't yeah. Wait. Yep. Yep, it's going to be the stage. He, he wants to, you know, he wants to show off the boat, so we're going to have that down there. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, almost every manufacturer will be there. Um, even uh, Charlie's Landing, which took over Royal Rooster over at Seaforth, he's going to be over with like free samples of his food. Um, you know, and then it really, you know, we are obviously having a massive sale where everything is discounted in the store. Um, we're actually with three stores worth of of tackle. We have a we have a overstock situation of reels, so we're gonna have a table out there, and you're not gonna be able to touch the deals on on a lot of the stuff. We just need wow. to move some stuff. So, um, and the standard, you know, like buy two get one free on hooks, lures, line, everything, ten percent off Floral reels. Carbon? I mean, like, fluorocarbon, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So, How and cool, we'll start Steve. spitting that out in our social media, but you, you'll, you'll, um, you know, it, it's, everything's deeply discounted, so. Like up to 50% off, according to your son, Ben. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that oh, right? Oh, did, did we hear 100%? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> no. Not, For him? Not kind of <laughs> but 100% of the seminars, uh, off off of the seminars, being able oh. to hear Corey and Afrin and Benny. Always That's 100% off. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100% off. 100% yeah. off. And, that's it. um... S- similar, we we the, the stack of stuff that's already been donated and we're throwing in there. I mean, we have a mound of stuff. I mean, it's it's got to be. It's I mean, I'm sure we're well over a thousand dollars of stuff already. Um, and we're going to have a raffle, and um, it's going to be half of it's going to go to CCA and half of it's going to go to Friends of Rollo. Oh, cool, Steve. Steve, Steve, wow. Steve yeah. I have yeah, participated yeah. in this every year, and yep. you and Johnny always do the best of the best and put it together nicely, and it's all the manufacturers that you want to see. I come down with a table full of stuff, and on top of the buy two, get one free, I'm giving away other stuff. And same thing with all the other guys yep. and gals that come down to join. And I, I want to thank you for putting on such a cool thing. It's such a great event. Yeah. There's Fast Lane next door, Ron, and, and stuff. They're going to have some free, free kayak demos, right? That's 100% off. 100%. <laughs> 100%. So, I mean, love the cookies. Cook, 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 oh, yeah, cookies. <laughs> and, and also, uh, you can uh, see uh, Wayne, Chris, and Tony and sign up for the Star Tournament there, too. You guys will be there. Absolutely. Yeah. Great event. May 4th at Dana Landing. uh, Live broadcast. So let's talk hook up. uh, Rick and I and maybe Corey, too, are going to be hanging out there doing the broadcast, 7 to 9 a.m. And and just a whole great event there right on the water in Dana Landing. Steve, thanks for putting that up on, and we appreciate that. No, we appreciate it. You guys have a great day. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Big report from the Eastern Sierra coming up. I can't wait. Yeah. We're going to be right back. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. The lighter the bite and the cleaner the water means one thing. Need a thinner leader for more natural presentations. That's where Seaguar Gold Label Leader Material shines. It's Seaguar's thinnest leader material yet. That means it's even less visible underwater and creates more natural presentations for better catch rates on leader shy fish. With exceptional knot and tinsel strength, this advanced leader material is now available from 2 pound test for fishing trout in the Sierra to 80 pound test for big yellow fin in Guadalupe. Get Seaguar Gold Label at your favorite tackle dealer or learn more at Seaguar.com. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. This is 
Adventures Rock Cod Rick for Adventure and Camping, where they bring the adventure to you. If you enjoy camping in the eastern Sierra but don't own an RV or a trailer or simply don't want the hassle, let Adventure and Camping park it for you. Check out their website, adventureandcamping.com. Select from over 75 campgrounds they serve. Decide on a trailer floor plan that fits your needs. Request a quote for your desired vacation dates. Then just show up and start your adventure. Adventure and Camping makes it so simple. They deliver the trailer to your spot and you enjoy a clean, spacious trailer. When it comes time to go home, just close the door and drive away. It doesn't get any easier. If you enjoy camping in the eastern Sierra but don't want the hassle, Adventure and Camping is for you. Check out AdventureandCamping.com for details. Make sure you mention that Rock Cod Rick sent you for a special price. AdventureandCamping.com For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew as well as the great meals and service speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Welcome to Let's Talk Hook Up and having so much fun in studio. Oh, it's so much fun. Well, hey, let's go up to the Eastern Sierra right now and talk to Ryan Doerr from Adventure and Camping. We just heard Rock God Rick talking about Adventure and Camping. Is it really that time of the year already, Ryan? Good morning, guys. Yep, it sure is. Looking forward to it. and it's, We're getting off to a great season. Uh, oh, yeah. I can attest to that, too, because I spent a couple days up in the eastern Sierra this past week, uh, trout fishing, and uh, uh, I was up in Mammoth, and I was down in Bishop fishing, and, uh, I mean, Crowley's totally ice-free, and uh, Convict's yep. ice-free, and a lot of other places. It's it's going to be one heck of an opener, right? Yeah, a big difference from last year. I mean, obviously, last year, we didn't really get an opening, just because we had so much snow, you know, even at the lower elevations, but... Yeah, just like you said, Pete, I mean, the lakes are, are open. Uh, the June Lake Loop is looking great. It's not your favorite spot. Um, I think Caltrans is still working on, you know, getting some rocks and stuff out of the road on the backside by Silver and Grant, but they'll have that open. Um, I was out by Grant uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's open. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we've got a lot of, had, had a pretty good winter, um, just not a lot of snow. So we have a lot of water in the lakes, and the streams are running good. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward to, uh, what I would normally call a, 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 a normal opener. Yeah, yeah. Crowley was jugged. I mean, it was right to the brim, right? Yeah, yeah. In fact, there is a little bit. Uh, some folks will be a little bit disappointed. They're not going to allow camping on the shoreline of Crowley just because it's uh, the water is so high. But uh, their campground will be open. Beaver Cove will be open, and of course, you can fish anywhere on Crowley, and you'll be able to access uh, you know all the shoreline because it's completely snow free. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, lots of water, beautiful uh, weather we've had. I mean, it's supposed to be in the 60s next week. And uh, so I, th- I think it's going to be a great opener. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, we announced it earlier in the show that Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea, Friends of Rollo, that you kindly donated uh, a prize uh, going uh, to Adventure and Camping. Guess who won that, Ryan? Our my co-host sitting right here, Corey Sandin. How about oh, that? Oh, that's awesome! That's so great. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, and he. I want you to know he was number two on the list, and out of all the thirty prizes, he chose adventure and camping because he wants to come up and visit you. And and Ryan, awesome. really, you know, bringing the family and 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 uh, bringing your wife and kids and family. It's really, it was to me the most lustrous of them all. It just it was inclusive with the family and just a great time in the Sierras. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And, uh, Shannon and I will, will make sure that your family has a great time up here. And I think that it's just a, a great way to experience camping in the Sierras because we do the work for you. You, know, you can come up here and enjoy. Camping should be fun. It shouldn't be work. 
And so I'm happy to hear that, you know, you come up here with your family and just enjoy the time with, you know, and instead of setting up your camper, you can be out fishing with your kids. There you yes. go. And so tell us, tell us about the procedure for those of our listeners that may not be familiar with what Adventure in Camping does. Kind of give us the rundown on what you do. So we have uh, travel traders and uh, various models of travel traders from small down around 20, 22 feet, all the way up over 30 feet, and I sleep a number of different people. And what we do is uh, you pick out your campsite anywhere from Bishop, all the way up to the Sierras, up to June Lake, we cover Mammoth, Convict, Rock Creek, um, up in the June Lake Loop area. You pick your campsite we, and your trailer. We bring the trailer out to you. We completely set it up, all ready to go for your for your camping weekend. You enjoy your camping time, and then when you're done, we come pick it up and we take care of everything for you. So there's literally just no hassle. You can some folks like to bring their boats with them so they don't have to worry about pulling the camper. Some folks like to just drive their, you know, comfortable car and not have to, to tow anything behind it. We, have, we even get folks that fly in to Mammoth and, and rent a car and then just go to their campsite for, for the weekend and, and then go home. Oh, geez, that How sounds crazy. like so much fun. And and the campers, I mean, he's like, these, some of these campers are like super deluxe, too. And uh, um, and, and you, you can also have them bring out a barbecue for you, firewood, the whole, any option you want. You set it all up, and, and it's it's seamless, right? Yep, absolutely. You now we try to make it as easy as possible. So you can go just, you know, if you just want to go to basic camper, you can do that. Or like you say, Pete, all the way up to including... You know, your chairs, your table, your barbecue. We'll bring firewood out to you for your stay. You know, and pretty much everything you need except for your food. Wow. And so, um, opener's two weeks away. Do you have any openings for the opener? We do. We are filling up. Um, people, I think, were a little bit, uh, you know, kind of timid about uh, making the reservations this year based on last year because last year was such a, a horrendous uh, snow uh, situation. Uh, but we are filling up fast. We do have a few uh, traders left. Um, you can go on our website, adventureincamping.com. Um, if you're not sure what you want to do or you're not sure, you know, kind of what your uh, your price range is, whatever, it's a very interactive website. You can go on there, pick your dates, your trailer model, and your uh, campground, we're going to give you uh, your, your, your price out the door with that, that includes delivery and setup. And um, and then um, you can submit that, and Shannon will contact you. She's in the office this next week, Tuesday on. She's not going to be in the office on Monday, but normally she's there um, seven days a week. And, uh, yeah, you know, we, we like I said, we still have some stuff open for, for opener. So uh, give her a call and, and or, you know, submit a request online, and we'd be happy to help you out. Yeah, I can attest. It's a different year this year than last year. The fish were biting down in Bishop, I can tell you that. And uh, it's going to be a great opener. But after the opener, if you don't want to go through the, the to the opener, man, it's going to be a great May, June, July. Yeah. It's not too early to make a reservation, especially for the prime summertime times, right? 100%. In fact, the uh, a lot of the, the uh, prime camp sites uh, will book up even, uh, you know, four to six months in advance. So... If you if you know you're going to come up here, or you want to come up and try it. Um, you know, pretty much mid June through mid August is the busiest time up here. Um, that's when you know kids are obviously out of school and you know people are traveling. Um, if you are flexible in your dates and you come, you know, like mid May through mid June, that's a great time. Or even in the fall, like like uh, you know in the last week of August through September oh. can be a great time. Um, and yeah, you know, but. Uh, you can go on, uh, you know, check out your uh, campsite. We have links to all the campsites on our website as well. And you can check and see uh, what's available. And, and if you've never been up to this year, you really need to come up here and check it out. It is truly it's, it's a, a spectacular great place. place right in our backyard there. So how do we get a hold of you? How do we book a trailer? You'll, you'll assist in finding the right campgrounds for people and everything, too. How do we find you? So go to a website. That's the best way to do it at adventureincamping.com. And from there, very, like I say, very interactive website. You can kind of peruse through and see uh, what we offer and where we go. And then you can either uh, submit an email. There's an email link on there. Or uh, the best way is you can submit a reservation request. You can put as much or as little information in there as you want, as long as we have your name and a way to get back in touch with you. Shannon in the office is really good about 
uh, contacting you, and she can help you out if you've never been up here before, give you recommendations on where to start, uh, kind of what your idea is if you're, you know, super into fishing, uh, where you might want to stay, or if you're coming up here with your family and you want to stay in Mammoth, where you're kind of central around, you know, restaurants and grocery stores and breweries and things like that, she can give you those ideas as well. So, adventuringcamping.com. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that, and we'll check in with you uh, post-opener with a report. How's that sound? That sounds great. You guys have a great weekend, and looking forward to seeing you. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that very much. Uh, hey, phones are packed. Texts are packed. Uh, you have a great text, right? I do, Pete. Yeah, I actually have it up here ready to go. Uh, text comes, let's see, hi, Wayne, Chris, and Tony. comes from Jim Hendricks, and he says, How likely are we to see the Fish and Game Commission reduce or shut down barred sand bass take in the future? And uh, he says he knows that the DFW had a proposal before the commission to do this. Now, before you answer that, I just yeah. want to throw out Jim Hendricks does so much the man. for CCA California, right? Tony, Chris, and Absolutely. Wayne, you're all Absolutely. shaking your head. That guy is a, a gem to have on board the, the state board. and uh, He's a gem, period. Yeah, he is a gem. He's <laughs> yeah. a great guy. Been on the show many, many times and uh, works very, very hard to keep our fisheries together. Good Absolutely. guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what Jim's talking about is the Department of Fish and Wildlife reached out, and they have a concern uh, about sand bass during the spawn cycle here in California, and that's a concern that we're overfishing the, the stock. Well, going back to the science part, are, do they have a true stock assessment on the sand bass? What is the spawn cycle? What is the, where are they at on recruitment? Uh, what is the, the size and the geography of it? And when they came and presented to us, uh, thankfully, SAC has done a lot of homework on the sand bass and had counterintelligence of science. And the majority of the sand bass actually do not reside here. They reside down the Baja coast, the, the majority of them. So the spawning is actually down there more than up here. We're at the top and fringe of that stock. So... Are we going, if, if they do regulation changes, is it really going to affect the overall abundance of stock? And that's the question. We actually uh, just got reached out yesterday uh, from the department for a follow-up meeting. So while they're trying to propose a regulation change, a bag limit change, and a date restriction change at the fishing game, right now we have not seen enough proof of uh, validity to it, but we'll know more at the next meeting. That's interesting stuff, really. I mean, to have you know a seasonal shutdown for their spawn or whatever. And I remember I was a part of the 80s, you know, when there were tens of thousands of sand bass. Right. I mean, you could literally throw a hot, you could fly line a hot dog <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah. and catch your limit of sand bass. It, it was that long crazy. Ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. All of our half and three quarter day boats were right, right out hey, here. Hey, the Huntington Diego. Flats, the Ivy Flats. But how do we not know? This is my question. How do we not know back then that that was just a cycle of an oversurge of an overpopulation that may have pushed up? Thank you. Exactly. I mean, I'm just that. That's we, very true. We that, didn't talk about this. We no, didn't. No, but that's exactly that. That those questions are what they need to answer to us because we believe that there are certain cycles that we're going through, and you know, and that's just part of what we hit Mother yeah. Nature, not because of our fishing efforts. We're just taking advantage when they happen to surge our way. We, so. Leave it to me, Wayne, to bring something yeah, up. Yeah, see, Corey, how you are. Right. Let's jump into the phone. Exactly. Let's do it. How about Jason? Jason in La Jolla. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, gentlemen. What a great show, as always. All this abundant knowledge is great. Um, and I just want to say, hey, what a great, awesome time it was a day at the docks. What a beautiful day, I tell you. Also, just a good, quick shout-out to Herb. I think that guy won almost every prize on the raffles. He got, like, two of the grand prizes <laughs> and, like, 13 of the red, white, and blue, I tell you. But, yeah, I just broke my ankle. I had a trip planned going here at the end of April to go fishing for a half-day fish. Or day fish. But, unfortunately, now I'm sitting in my hospital bed. So now I get to go in two months. But besides that, my only question was, what is the best and safest way to release a fish? Ah, good question. Depending on the fish. The ones with bladders, do we want them descended? Um, because you need to take them back to depth for the to counter the barotrauma. Other fish, uh, depending on the, the size of them, some of them you just need to make sure that they, you know, you put them back in the water and make sure that they um, don't float away, that you actually get them to start uh, uh, breathing again uh, by 
get, making sure that the water is going through their gills, and then uh, and then you can release them. It do, it really depends on the fish. Each species is unique, and to do it as quick as possible. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's some species you don't want to take out of the water if you're going to release them because they just they just don't handle the you know the pressure of gravity well. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And, uh, hey, thanks a lot for the call. Appreciate that. And good luck uh, recovering for sure. Hey, um, I have a great text here uh, from uh, Bob and IB. And he says, Day at the Ox was great. Fishing Game was giving out laminated rockfish ID charts. Very cool. For people that didn't make it down, is there a way to get that chart? And I agree. It's a great piece of gear to yeah, have there's a, there, We've been handing these rockfish ID charts out now for a few years. Yeah. Uh, that and, was- and Fishing Game provides them for free. They we have all been providing them for free because yeah. we had funding from NOAA to get them printed. Ah, nice. But uh, right now we have gone through our inventory and we're waiting to see if we have more funding so they can do another printing. Okay. We also started handing out uh, descending devices for the last few years, oh, it, preempting okay. knowing that this was coming. Uh, because you do need to have a descending device on the boat when you go rock fishing now. Correct. It's part of the law. Part of the law. So just have it on there. Now we've been handing those out, and what happened was we we got out. So we're waiting again for Noah to refund that and get more uh, available. Now, watch our website here coming up pretty quick or watch our social media because the definition of a descending device can be everything from a crimped upside-down snelled hook all the way to a, a, a sequelizer. Right. So there's all these different methods. You do not have to spend a lot of money if you don't want to. Some are just better than others. And then the next event, I'm assuming, is May 4th at Dana Landing. You can come see Chris and Tony and Wayne, and they'll talk to you about that, that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. We're double dipping that day because we have that morning event, and we all have a poker night up in Channel Island. Holy oh macro. Big day. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back. You're listening to Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. It's a Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and that Let's Talk Hook Up app. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Hey, this is Rosie with Cedro Sport Fishing. We have always been the leader with all-inclusive fishing trips to Cedros Island. We now have two lodges to choose from and both sit on the cliff's edge with relaxing ocean views and gorgeous morning sunrises. With direct flights departing to the CBX in San Diego, we are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. Come check out the yellowtail and calico bass capital in the world. Nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. Call me at 619-772-7570 or check us out at cedrosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. This is Bob Hoots at Costa Sunglasses. Visual signs are a critical part of my fishing program, from bay bass to bluefin. I wear Costas to see what's out there. Costas are built with advanced polarization technology with our 580 lens, designed to cut through the sun's glare while providing enhanced color to see more fish. Costa was founded by a group of anglers wanting a high-performance lens for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your adventures. CostaSunglasses.com. San Diego, if there's one thing we like, it's choices. And your San Diego County Ford dealer is the place to start. With great offers on a full lineup of vehicles and available powertrains, get your ideal combination of power and capability. Whether it's gas, hybrid, or all-electric, you have the power to choose. Get ready and go get your own. Visit your local San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. Up. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up, and we're going to have Tony flip the coin. Go for it, Tony. Oh, man, I apologize in advance. Let's do this. Oh, is it, what is it, texter or caller? Call- Looks like a texter. A texter, okay. Texter. Our texter today wins a full-day trip on the San Diego's Chris from San Marcos. Yeah, Chris, congratulations. congratulations. And you win the two tickets to the Apps and Taps on May 
18th, 18th. at yep. the Marina Village right next to C4 Sport Fishing. Yep. Yeah, and if somebody wants to come to Apps and Taps honoring Frank Lopresti, once again, I'm going to be there along with a host of the, your favorite captains here from the San Diego fleet and mm-hmm. Wayne and Chris and Tony will be there too. Honor, uh, honoring how, how a roast. We, how do we get in there? <laughs> uh, ccacalifornia.org. All All right. Right. Just hit our events button. It's right there. Pops up. Pay your money, you're good to go. There you go. And, of course, the Star Tournament, Tony. Uh, how do you get in the Star Tournament? Yeah, it's going to be similar. Um, you can go on to the ccacalifornia.org website. There's a little star button there at the top. You can go ahead and register through there really quick. I do want to reiterate with the Star Tournament. The pictures that you take of those fish, they must be on the measuring device that we either handed out at any of the six shows we were at this year, um, or you can pick them up at one of the landings. Yeah, okay, and 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 you get that when you uh, get into CCA. Even a big 200-pound bluefin, you got to have that thing in there? Yep. Yeah, yeah all of it. Slap That's them right. on top. There you go. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks uh, for all the hard work you guys all do, Wayne, Tony, and Chris, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you soon. Hey, thanks to our brand-new board up, Matias, for manning the phones and the board for the first time. We sure appreciate his hard efforts, and, of course, Adam for manning the Let's Talk Hookup app. We sure appreciate him, too. And, of course, you out there, your text your calls, and just your support of Let's Talk Hookup. We're very grateful for you being out there. We will be back tomorrow morning. Corey and I will be here with Captain Fred Huber from the Daily Double and Captain Steve Peterson from the Mission Bell. That's going to be a great show. 7 to 9 a.m. right back here on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app.